since there is still leaf tissue and it's still actually growing, this is considered a transplant. Guys, I'm cleaning this off for you so you can actually see what's going on here. And if we really wanted to get in here and look at this, we would just take a hose. Hey everybody, Sean and Allison here from Spoken Garden. Hi there, how are you doing today everybody? So today we're cleaning out a couple of our pots because we want to reuse them around the garden and we're going to do some transplanting and some different things. But before we get to all of that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on every daily video we post. Okay, you guys, so we are super excited today because we're kind of digging into this pot that we don't really know what's going on underneath. As you can see how beautiful it looked in the spring and summer, look at all that color. And canna lilies are one of our favorites anyway. Well, everything's our favorite, I think. Mm -hmm but we are going to save this bulb. We're gonna take this bulb out and transplant it into our landscape. Guys, here's our pot right now. And you can see it looks a little bit different than it did over the summer. And it's starting to die back a little bit and go dormant. So this is a perfect time for us to clean out this pot and transplant this canna lily into our garden. Since there is still leaf tissue and it's still actually growing, this is considered a transplant of the bulb and it's okay to do that in the fall, at least in our zone 8B. If this was just a bulb that was in its dormancy period and with no green tissue, we would actually wait until the spring to plant these in the ground. But, but right now, like Sean said, we need to get these out of these containers because we're running out of containers and we need more. So we're gonna reuse them in a different way for a fall container take the canna lily, get it into the ground so it's in its new home. So here's another planter that we have with the canna lily. It's a different canna lily. This is the red blooming canna lily and the other one we just showed you had the yellow canna in it. So this one, we've actually got a begonia right in here and we're not sure if this is actually a tuberous begonia or a different kind of begonia. So we're so gonna transplant this canna lily and dig in and see if this begonia is actually a tuberous begonia. If it is, we're gonna hold it over, we're gonna save it and we're gonna put it in our garden too today. Oh, that's gonna be so awesome because you guys, begonias are, they thrive in shady areas and if you've been watching our videos, you know that we're looking for shade loving plants to fill in our um, one of our beds in the front yard. And we're pretty sure based on the way the leaves look, the serration on the leaves, we're pretty sure these might be the tuber, tuberous kind. But you never know until you dig in right? and find out. So. Look at that color though. I mean, they're still in bloom. Yep. They're just gorgeous. We absolutely love this color. And so guys, the, the whole plan here is, is that if it is a tuberous begonia, we'll treat this as a transplant too, and then it should be fine. <laughs> hey guys, so what we've done is we've already dug our hole for the canna lily. Now you can see I've dug it a little bigger than you might think this plant needs over here, but I wanted to give its roots an easier time to actually dig in and grow in this area to get better established faster. So I've also got our favorite hand trowel here with the hash marks for inches and measurements. So I'm using this trowel with these hash marks and in inches to measure from the very top surface of the mulch all the way down to the depth we need to get to. It's got a four inch mark on it, so I'm using that to make sure that we are planting four inches down, but we're incorporating the layer of mulch into our depth because if we don't, we could potentially dig deeper and plant these rhizomes deeper, these cannas deeper than we want to. We don't wanna do that. Um, next step is to get the cannas out of the pot and get them in the hole. So I've moved the pot away from where it was at. I'll move it out here to the grass. So if we make a mess with the soil, we'll just break it out and it's fine. So I've got it on its side so I can easily pull different plants out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start pulling some of these plants right out of here. And I'm gonna be careful not to pull the canna lily. But the rest of these plants, we really don't mind tearing them out and throwing them out. See, there's there's a way to do it. That little guy just came right out. Oh, I had a I had a hold of one of the one of the canna lilies there. All right, so we're still moving things out. So the reason we're being so careful is because we don't want to hurt the canna lilies. So now that we've got it cleared out around it from all the other plants that were in the pot, now we can start dividing these and getting these out. So I'm just going through and trying to get some excess soil off of this. Also, you can see there's some dead tissue already forming on the plant. It's going into its dormant cycle. And so I'm just going through and cleaning that up as I go. So really what we need to do is just start really getting in here. I don't want to use a shovel on this because I don't want to hurt the actual rhizomes themselves, but I want to get this out of here. And so you can see what I've done. I kind of broke that right there, but that's okay in my opinion anyway. So guys, I'm cleaning this off for you so you can actually see what's going on here. And if we really wanted to get in here and look at this, we would just take a hose and just really 
get all this extra soil, this potting soil off of this. But what I want to do is show you, this is all one piece. It's got two shoots, but there's, there's a piece in here. If I turn it around, you can see it better. See that? This is a rhizome. It's like an underground root that just kind of goes out and it's got these different points where these shoots come off of, and this is how it actually spreads. You can see right here, here's an actual shoot coming up. This is going to be a new plant. This is going to be a new shoot like that. You can see the sheath coming off from it, and it's just, isn't that cool? That's so interesting how it grows like that. Yeah. And then there's, yeah. Look at that. And then there's some new roots that are going to come out of this, and this is going to go down or come to the side too and keep growing that way. That's really this cool. is really cool. So there's one. We can keep that as one if we want to. I'm really curious how many rhizomes are in this pot. I know. It looks like they are packed in there. Yeah, they really are. This was grown probably a couple years uh, in succession to get it this full to then sell. And guys, I'm trying not to really manhandle this too much because I don't really want to hurt this plant. I, I don't want to stress this plant out any more than I have to in this transplanting. And so I'm trying to be really cognizant of what I'm doing without really hurting the plant too much. So I'm gonna go for something here and see what happens. I'm exposing a couple things here. And what we've got here is, is okay, I basically just divided this. <laughs> this was connected to this right here and I just severed that with the trowel. These all seem to be very, very connected. And there we go. All right, well, there's a mass. We've got four shoots and some other ones possibly that want to come up in the spring. So there's some more. So neat. There's a growing so point. So can we tell if, if this is one rhizome? Or do, um, what's going on in there? Oh, well, these were all connected as, one, as part of one giant rhizome. And we're actually dividing them as we go here when I separate them like that, that's what is actually happening. So we're almost there. We've got a little bit more of the soil to remove here. So here is what we have from that pot. Um, we've actually divided a lot of pieces off that you, like you saw us do. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this chunk and place it right here. And this is gonna be its new home. So I've already dug the hole down to just past four inches because I wanna give those roots something to dig into. And so I'm just gonna make a little mound here in the center to set this down on. And then I'm gonna spread those roots out as best I can. And what I'm doing too is I've positioned this so the leaves are actually going towards the sun. Uh, our southeast, southwest face is that way. And so I'm actually angling this plant to actually have its leaves in the optimum position to get the sun uh, and get that sunlight. And then we're just gonna start backfilling the hole here. All right, this one's in the ground and we think it looks great in its new home. We will expect some dieback and as the season progresses, obviously it's gonna get cooler. So this will wither and die back to the ground. But... Yeah, it's protected under four inches total of mulch and soil. So it's got some insulation. We're in zone eight and it's actually hardy to zones eight through 12 of the USDA hardiness zones. So we're just on the cusp of the hardiness zone. So we should be fine, but we'll see how it does. So moving on to our next canna lily container that we need to break down. And this is exciting because again, we have these beautiful begonias and we're really keeping our fingers crossed that they are tubers that we can plant in our own landscape. So are you guys ready to find out? I'm ready to find out. I see little structures right here forming. So this might be the tuberous begonia. There is a storage structure right there. It's tiny, but it is there, so. So we've got a couple more of these canna lilies to put in the ground, but 
We wanted to show you how we're gonna do that and what we're gonna do with those pots. I know, we're so excited that the begonias are tubers. Yeah, but we need to do a little more research to make sure we find them the best home. We may just end up keeping them inside until next spring and then we'll plant them at that time. Oh, and so before we go, we wanna let you know we have a free bulb ebook for you that you can download and the link will be down below for you. It goes into the five different kinds of bulbs there are. It talks about how to orient and handle them to get them in the ground correctly. And it talks also about when the right time is to plant spring flowering bulbs and summer flowering bulbs. So the link will be down below for you. So check it out. So leave your comments and questions down below. We love hearing from you guys. Give us that thumbs up. Let us know we're doing a good job and subscribe to our channel so you get updates on our latest videos. Yep, that's a wrap for today, you guys. And we'll be back tomorrow, but we're gonna be live again at 5 p.m. Pacific time. We're gonna be talking about bulbs, and then we'll be back Thursday with our next regular video. Until then, see you tomorrow, everybody. See you tomorrow, everybody. Bye-bye.